Welcome to today's video of Math Strategies Made Simple with Mrs. Braun. Today we're going to be taking a look at equivalent fractions and how to represent them using these st fraction strips. So if you notice up here on the screen, I've got some different fraction strips in relation to the whole. I've got one half, one third, one fourth, one sixth, and one eighth. So when I talk about equivalent fractions, I'm talking about fractions that are equal to each other or that shade in the same amount of the whole. So let's take a look at the fraction one half. And so I want to try to find a fraction that is equal to one half. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to represent one half on this first bar down here. And so what I'm going to try to do is find a different fraction that is equal to that fraction. So I'm going to use this line and line it up because what it has to start and stop at the same place. So if you notice, my holes are lined up. They start and stop at the same size, at the same spot. They're the same size. And so to find an equivalent fraction, I need to find a fraction that fits within that same space of the one half. So I'm going to start with one third. So I'm going to bring the one third down and I'm going to start filling it in. With one third, it doesn't quite reach that line. And so I'm going to use the second one, but the second, so two thirds, goes beyond that line. And so what that tells me is that I cannot find an equivalent fraction for one half using thirds. Now if I use more than one half, then that's a different story, but looking at just one half, I can't use the one third size pieces. So let's move on to the one fourth size pieces. So I'm going to use the one fourth size pieces and I'm going to line them up. Now when I line up these pieces, I cannot have gaps and I cannot overlap them because it doesn't represent the actual fraction when I do that. And so I've got to line them up end to end, and if you can see here, these two one-fourth pieces start and stop at the same place. And so what that tells me is that one-half is equal to, or equivalent to, two-fourths. Now let's see if we can find another one. So I'm going to go to these six, one-six size pieces. I'm going to bring them down. One's not enough. Two's not enough. Ooh. Let's look at three. But three lines up exactly with that one half. And so that again tells me that one half is equal to two fourths, which is equal to three sixths. All right, let's take a look at these eights. So using the eights, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm lining them up end to end, no gaps, no overlaps. I'm going to see. And they line up exactly. They start and stop at the same place as the one half within the same size hole. And so those four eighths right there is also equivalent to one half. All right, let's take a look at another example. Let's look at two thirds. Now to represent two thirds, I'm going to use the one third pieces. But since the numerator is two, I'm going to have two of those pieces. So I'm going to pull this down, remove this line. For a second, I'll represent two thirds. Again, no gaps, no overlaps, just lined up end to end. I'm going to put my line down here so I know what I have to get to to be equal to it. Now I'm going to start with the one half size pieces. So when I look at the one half size pieces, one isn't enough, but two goes over that line, so I can't use the one half. It's not going to be equivalent to two thirds. So I'm going to go to the four size pieces. So I'm looking at these one four size pieces. And they, two is not enough, but three again extends beyond that line. So you can see right here. And so I can't use those one four size pieces because they don't line up. So let's look at the six. Again, starting and stopping at the same place, lining them up end to end. And there we have one. And so two thirds is equivalent to four. Now let's take a look at the eights. Again, starting at the same place. I'm going to line them up end to end. Make sure that there's no gaps or overlaps. So far, four eighths isn't quite there. Five eighths is close, but I still have this space here between the last piece and that line, and so they are not equivalent. And so using these pieces, two thirds and four sixths are equivalent. All right, let's take a look at one more example. Look at three-fourths. Okay, so 
going to represent three-fourths. And looking at the denominator, I'm going to use these one four size pieces. I'm going to pull them out. I lost the numbers on that one there. And I'm going to represent three-fourths. The numerator is three, so I need three of those pieces. I'm going to put my line there so I know what I need to get to. I'm going to start with the one-half pieces down here. One isn't enough, but two goes beyond that line, so I can't use the one-half size pieces. Look at the one-third size pieces. Again, two is not enough, but three goes beyond that line, so that doesn't work. Looking at the six, starting and stopping, lining them up end to end, making sure there's no gaps or overlaps. Again, that's not enough with four. Five is too much, so we're going to put those back. Let's take a look at the eights. And what I notice here is that the one-fourth is equal to two-eighths. So if I have three-fourths, I'm pretty sure these eights are going to work. So let's figure out how many eights it's going to take to equal three-fourths. All right. So it took six-eighths to equal three-fourths. Okay, so three-fourths, six-eighths are equivalent fractions. Let's see if you can find an equivalent fraction for two fifths. All right, I hope this video was helpful, and we'll see you again next time.